When is it too late to back out of buying a house? Can a buyer back out of a purchase agreement? The bigger question may be, can a buyer back out without losing any money or any of their deposit? Today, I'm gonna walk you through all the possible ramifications of a buyer canceling wall and contract, and we're starting now. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Erica Monroe, I'm a Bay Area Realtor with Remax Gold, and I specialize in Solano County. Before diving into today's topic, I just wanna preface this video by saying, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not offering legal advice. Should you need any, please consult with a real estate attorney. We're simply discussing potential ramifications of a buyer canceling while in contract on a California Association of Realtors purchase agreement. If you're under new construction, they have their own set of contracts and different contingencies. So when can a buyer back out of buying a house? Well, the short answer is a buyer can back out pretty much any time right up to closing, but they will likely face monetary ramifications and possibly legal ones. So today, let's focus on how not to lose money. If you remember, once you get into contract, you submit an earnest money or good faith deposit into escrow. Escrow is that neutral third party. A seller doesn't have immediate access to it, but it shows good faith that you really do want to purchase their home. Your earnest money or good faith deposit is your skin in the game. This is what you potentially jeopardize if you default on the contract. Commonly in Solano County, we see anywhere from 2 to 3% of the purchase price offered as the buyer's good faith or earnest money deposit. So it's a significant amount of money. The contract does have protection periods or contingency periods put into place to protect that earnest money deposit. But given how active the market has been, a lot of buyers are waiving those contingencies. That makes their earnest money deposit that much more vulnerable. In California, there are three common contingencies, the inspection investigation contingency, the appraisal contingency, and the loan contingency. Your inspection investigation contingency is the easiest contingency to cancel under without jeopardizing your earnest money deposit. This is really your get out of free jail card. You can investigate the property, you can hire professionals to do a home inspection, a pest termite and a roof inspection, you can drive around the neighborhood and decide whether it's a good fit for you or your family. You basically have the ability to cancel for any reason under the inspection or investigation period. Now again, with today's market being so hot, a lot of buyers have opted to remove this contingency to strengthen their offer. Well, you need to understand the potential ramifications. You can no longer cancel for the condition of property or condition of home if you've waived that contingency. If you do so, you're likely gonna jeopardize your earnest money deposit. Pro tip, did you know that the contract stipulates that a seller can only come after up to 3% of the purchase price as liquidated damages? So let's say that you offered 100,000 as your earnest money or good faith deposit, and the home is only worth 500,000. You did so in order to strengthen your offer. Maybe you're now defaulting on the contract, you've removed the contingencies, and your earnest money deposit is in jeopardy. Know that the seller can only come after up to 3% of the purchase price. For a $500,000 house, that would be $15,000. So even though you placed $100,000 into escrow, the seller can only come after up to $15,000. It's still a significant amount of money, but it's important to know your rights. Again, be your biggest advocate. The second layer of protection for your earnest money deposit is your appraisal contingency. Any buyer that's receiving financing from a bank or a lender will likely have to have an appraisal. The appraisal contingency is so important to keep intact if you can, because we are seeing a big discrepancy between appraisal value and market value. Again, market value being what a willing and able buyer will pay for a home. Appraisal value is based on recently sold comps. If you're in an appreciating market, your comps are always going to trail in value compared to market value because the value in the buyer's eyes or perception continuously rises. If there is a discrepancy between the appraisal value and your purchase price, 
the appraisal contingency allows you to cancel without jeopardizing your earnest money deposit. If you have this contingency in place, you can of course try to negotiate with the seller to ask them to lower the price or find a middle ground that you're both comfortable with. If you've removed this contingency, you are telling the seller from the start, you agree to pay the purchase price regardless of what the home appraises for. The appraisal value is so important because that's what the lender utilizes to set the loan amount. They're not gonna just go off of your purchase agreement. The appraisal set in place to ensure that the value is there. And in an appreciating market, again, appraisal value likely to trail market value. Appraisers also have the ability to attach conditions to the appraisal, meaning that they're calling out a problem that needs to be solved or cured before the loan can fund. It can be something like double strapping a hot water heater, making sure there's a carbon monoxide detector in the home, I've seen removing a gas line from a garage that could cause asphyxiation. If you don't have this contingency in place and the seller refuses to correct the issue, you again can cancel without losing your earnest money deposit. Quick tip for FHA and VA buyers. A lot of agents surprisingly don't know this information, so listen up, be your biggest advocate. When you're an FHA or VA buyer, when you first present your offer, you have to include an FHA VA amendatory clause. And in that clause, it stipulates that an FHA or VA buyer cannot lose their earnest money deposit if the home does not appraise. So this essentially means that an FHA or VA buyer cannot waive their appraisal contingency. If your agent doesn't know and they have you do so upfront, and the home does not appraise for the purchase price, you should be able to cancel and still get your earnest money deposit back. Your third and final protection period for your earnest money deposit is your loan contingency. If you no longer qualify for your loan, you lost your job or perhaps loan guidelines have changed, you can still back out of the purchase without losing your earnest money deposit. If you've waived your loan contingency upfront to strengthen your offer, and you no longer qualify for your loan, the seller will likely try to come after your earnest money deposit as liquidated damages for taking the home off the market. Unless your lender has fully underwritten your file or given you the green light to remove your loan contingency, retain it for as long as the contract allows you to do so. It's your final protection period. It's the last way to protect that earnest money deposit before closing. With how tough the market has been, a lot of agents are starting to get really creative when writing offers, and sometimes it jeopardizes the buyer's best interests. Some agents are pushing for the buyers to remove either their appraisal or loan contingency, retaining one or the other, basically saying they're interchangeable and you can cancel and still get your deposit back if you can't perform on one of those areas. Well, that puts you in a difficult position. The seller may not agree with that. When you go to cancel, they may refuse to release your earnest money or sign away your good faith deposit. When it comes to releasing the deposit, the buyer and seller have to come to a meeting of the minds. They have to agree because escrow cannot operate off of one party's instructions. If you're considering writing an offer and relying on one remaining contingency as your catch-all, I would highly recommend talking to a real estate attorney. Find out how vulnerable your earnest money deposit would be. That's so important to know because if you lose that deposit or it's held hostage, it may take you out of the running to purchase a home. If you need a more thorough overview of what contingencies are or what protection periods are written into the contract, or you'd like to see an example of a 21-day closing schedule, check out either of my videos. They have such great information. And as always, feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, ding that little bell so you're notified when I post my next video.